let's go ahead and get started here because I think we're at uh, we're at a good enough time. I think we've got a quorum now with our with our participants, um, everybody out there. My name is Carl Harvell. I'm the uh, director of product marketing, product management for the U.S. And go ahead, T. Hey everyone, my name is T, product manager for video conferencing for the U.S. office as well. Oh yeah, so guys, today we're going to go over tech training. We're going to go over some tips and tricks for not only our PTZ app that we have, but on a couple of cameras that we have, but also, you know, what are the differences between, you know, web access and, and uh, the PTZ app that we have. So with that in mind, you know, the agenda today, we're, I don't want to PowerPoint you guys to death. Really, I want to go over a couple of key items here, kind of keep it short and sweet for you guys, but mainly go over like the physical aspect of setting up our cameras for conference rooms and or different uh, uh, setup scenarios software setup, you know, how to configure the Ethernet, go over the PTZ app, in, in other words, uh, change firmware settings from the USB options, and then some really quick troubleshooting uh, uh, tools, techniques, and or what you guys should look out for. So with that in mind, I'm going to go ahead and jump right into it. If you guys have any questions, uh, definitely uh, leaving them in there or pop them into the QA section and we'll try to answer them as we go along. But feel free to ans ask anything. And, you know, hopefully I don't speak too fast. If I do, let me know, because I tend to mm -hmm. speak fast in these things. So with that in mind, uh, we're gonna go over some of the physical aspects of it. Now, most of our cameras, actually all of our cameras, uh, except for one, have uh, a tripod screw on the bottom of them. Now, these cameras are great because you could, install them upside down they spin around almost completely so you could pretty much install them at the head end of a conference room at the very back end to be like a content camera if you wanted to uh, most of the time or with the the uh, the wall mount that comes with these cameras because uh, every camera comes with some kind of mount the uh, wall mount that comes with the uh, camp 20 pro and his variants uh come for generally mounting on a wall upright if you want to mount upside down, you would have to buy an optional mount for it. And the SKU number is kind of in the bottom right corner there. But that is the only one that uh, leaves you the ability to kind of mount the camera upside down on the mount and then screw that into a ceiling or into a back end wall to be able to, uh, to, to get uh, up for those ceiling type installations. Now, I've seen people mount our cameras using tripods, just sitting on a shelf. Uh, one other great option as well is being able to use Heckler for a um, for a mounting option because they make some pretty good mounts that work perfectly for our cameras. We had given them some samples and they work uh, perfectly. Um, one other thing about physical setup is using USB extenders. Now I know uh, USB extenders are always a big question. You know, all of our cameras are pretty much 3.0 cameras. People ask, can you use the USB 2.0 extenders? And there are a ton of different USB extenders out in the market or USB extender manufacturers. Now we've every, I would say two quarters, our R&D department kind of go through a certification process where we look at USB extenders, test them against our camera lines and then post the results in our uh, knowledge base. So you'll notice the link for them kind of down here. Uh, you could access that from our support website. Bottom line, USB 2.0 extenders work great. Just remember that every time you use a USB 2.0 extender, you're only gonna get about 1080p resolution. You're not gonna get 4K resolutions. A lot of people uh, are okay with that. Usually when you're using Zoom, when you're using some other type of Microsoft Teams, you're only gonna get 1080p resolution anyways. Uh, but with that in mind, uh, getting a actual 4K resolution out of some of like uh, the Cam 130 that I have now, if you're gonna do some kind of video streaming with it, uh, you would use a 3.0 extender. Um, one aspect to know about with physical setup and cabling is uh, Connectivity for power. Uh, most of our cameras do come with a DC power connection, but uh, a lot of our newer cameras do come with PoE Plus right in the back of it. So having a single Ethernet cable for connectivity for power and data for management uh, would work well. 
Uh, we are experimenting right now with doing some virtual USB connectivity through the ethernet and it works fairly well. I'm gonna show you how to set that up just a little bit uh, within the PTZ app uh, to set up, but just know that uh, having that connectivity option for cabling is, is pretty powerful now. Uh, most of our cables or almost all of our, or all of our cameras come with an RS-232 DIN 9 connector. And you could use that for out of band control. So like a Crestron control, Extron control panel um, using a uh, con joystick controller uh, can be used for controlling all of our cameras, you know, cause kind of make them to be uh, pretty powerful and have a lot of connectivity options. So with that in mind and uh, me moving on, uh, is there any questions so far? I know somebody raised their hand. If you could post that question uh, to the uh, question portion, I'll be able to answer that for you. Moving on. All right, so right now I'm gonna go over the software setup. We're gonna kind of go over the web GUI settings, uh, ethernet config and, and everything there. So I am going to stop with the PowerPoint presentation part and kind of bring up the PTZ app. So, so on this page here, um, you know, once you load the PTZ app, and you can pull that down from our web, uh, from our website, from our support page, we have kind of two web pages out there. We have a United States based one, uh, and we have one that's based out of our headquarters in Taiwan. Generally, depending on where you're at, wherever you type in aver.com, it'll take you to one or the other. But if you go to the support section, you'll be able to pull down our PTZ app too. Once you load it up and you double click on the icon, it's gonna bring up a web page. This uh, application is really meant for uh, room-based systems. Uh, so you can kind of leave it as a service running in the background uh, and be able to you know, access different cameras that are in the conference room to, to manage. Uh, with that in mind, on my computer now, I have two cameras connected up via USB that I'm able to manage from my PC. That's my VC520 Pro and our Cam 130 that I'm talking with on uh, talking on right now. Now, the great thing about this, these are the USB devices connected. But if I did want to do a virtual stream, I would select the virtual stream button. What it's going to do is that it's going to look for an IP address of devices that are on the network. And if I wanted to use and dedicate my uh, that PTZ app towards a camera for ethernet connectivity and be able to look at video via ethernet, I would use this virtual stream option here. Definitely play around with it. We're on our first version of it. I think it works great. Slight delay within uh, within the, uh, the video latency on it, but it's not noticeable to the average people. Just know that this is not certified for Zoom and or Microsoft Teams, but uh, they know it's available. So with that in mind, I'm just going to go over some really fast things. Uh, while you're having the PTZ app 2 up, uh, you can access a camera via the USB by clicking the settings button. But if I wanted to change the IP address, let's just say the IP address of my BC520 Pro 2, I would select this little edit icon and I could change it from DHCP to static. Um, I could set a static IP if I address if I wanted to, along with the subnet, the gateway, and everything would be good to go. Uh, on this one, I could check the health of all the connectivity devices. For instance, my VC520 Pro 2 has a uh, speakerphone connected to it, and that's it. Uh, but also, if I wanted to access the web page of it and not access the settings of the USB, I would click on this little gear icon. So with that in mind, I'm going to stop sharing. Um, uh, T, I'm going to go ahead and let you kind of take over with the screen share. And while that comes up, I'm going to see uh, if anybody has any uh, any questions. All right. Are A10 cables plenum rated? Um, that's a great question. Um, I believe they are. I know there's a couple of different um, uh, cables that they make because they make fiber cables and then they make um, the uh, Ethernet uh, cables. So I believe both of them are plenum rated. Plenum rating means that it could live in the ceilings and when they burn it, they won't release off toxic gases. Um, but I would have to validate with ATEN. Um, 
T, you want to go ahead and kind of show us uh, some of the PTZ controls of a BC520 Pro 2? Definitely. So right now, uh, so we are going to do a little bit more of a deep dive. So apologies if some of this is kind of basic, you guys already know it, but good review for everyone. So right now, I'm going to just be showing you how to set a preset. So right now, I'm a little bit zoomed out. I want the shot to be a little bit tighter. So I'm going to go ahead and zoom in a little bit. Frame it to my liking. And you know what? That's good enough for me. To, to set, all I have to do is set the preset button right there. So this one's good to go. Something really great is that we are actually using a larger room camera right now. And all of our larger room cameras actually has a 340 degrees pan. So right now I'm going to demonstrate that with a preset I saved. <clears throat> so this is already going all the way almost to the back of the room. You kind of get a nice look at one of my house plans as well as a great book to read. So if I'm going to go a little bit more, this will actually show off the full 340 degrees. So this is basically facing almost all the way back. Another really awesome thing. So I'm actually on the k 20 Pro 2 camera, same as the VC520 Pro 2 camera. So for this one, it is going to be a 12 times optical zoom. So for this one, let me demonstrate right here. Nice. So it kind of just zips around pretty fast. So exactly. so, T, there, so there is a question that came up. And, and one of the questions is, do you need the app to control the camera? Or can you do it from just like a web page and go to the browser directly? Yeah, so we actually have three different options. Um, the first one would be using the PTZ app too, I'm currently on. You can also use the remote mode I have right here, which comes with all of our large room cameras. And you can also use our web-based management as well, which is called our easy manager. So you have a couple of different options based on what you want to go about. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. so you go directly into the camera. Full options there. Exactly. And right here, it is a great demonstration of the 12 times optical zoom. Um, hopefully, if you guys have good eyesight, <laughs> you'll be able to read every single line on this right here, all the way down to enterprise video conference business. How far away, how far away are you? So I'm only about six feet away. So some of you guys are probably like, cool, but like not super impressive. So don't worry. <laughs> we do have one more piece that I saved right here. And this is about, I'm going to say 18 feet away. So I do have a pretty large office space, AKA my bedroom but that is gonna be a standard <laughs> size postcard right there. So you guys can kind of see how the zoom is and everything. So honestly, it's gonna be a pretty quiet zoom, super quick, super smooth, as I, I'm gonna go back to the very first one right here. Hi guys. <laughs> <laughs> and then, so that's pretty much all you need to know about presets. So we can kind of go into a little bit more of the deeper settings. And then Carl, do you wanna go over the tracking mode really quick? Sure, sure. So I mean, so a lot of a lot of our cameras, and, and here's a really important thing, guys. There's a reason why we put the the control and have the ability to set the presets kind of right in the front, as opposed to going directly into the settings. And you know, one of the main reasons for that is because setting up a right area for a camera to make intelligent decisions is kind of important. You know, you could have a conference room that's a rectangular layout. And if you look at the field of view of a camera, let's just say that my image right here was a conference room. You know, my body would be the conference room table, I guess you could say. Um, and this section would be a big hallway of people walking by or a wall. You know, no one is ever going to be in this section here. Uh, as well as let's just say in this section, it could probably be just furniture. And so, you know, if you wanted to have a camera that had auto framing capabilities built within it, you could set the smart frame preset point that's kind of in the center of what that screen share shows and say, you know, save a preset that will be within this area. And every time a uh, meeting starts, it'll look at this area to frame the camera accordingly. So you could trim off excess uh, uh, area that don't need to be um, that don't need to be uh, processed for the AI. Now we do have different tracking modes. There's a manual mode in which somebody says, hey, I want the camera to be framed up. Um, everybody's in the conference room now. Let me push the button and it'll frame. And that's where the camera kind of goes through its algorithm of counting people, uh, reporting that back via APIs to wherever service provider that you would want to, that could access it. Uh, and then it frames up the image accordingly built into its own settings. Uh, the auto frame portion of it 
is uh, has a little bit of tracking built within it. So let's just say one person comes into a conference room and is doing a presentation and auto framing is on. The framing will notice that a person is there. That person starts walking around, the camera will move with them uh, as, they, as they are presenting with one person. Uh, as soon as another person comes into the conference room, that's when the algorithm will kick in and say, okay, we'll do a frame instead of a track. And so it has a little bit of auto tracking capabilities, but then uh, ultimately goes to framing when multiple people are in the conference room. Preset framing is where you could set a preset to say, well, do you know what? Over on the left side of the conference room, let's just say it's this area here and there is a whiteboard there. When I walk into that area and it hits the preset area, the camera's gonna recall the preset as opposed to just having me solely framed up. So if I wanted to write something on a whiteboard, it will automatically make that, uh, make that choice. So there's, there's uh, variables there that you can set up for conference rooms that you could customize not how the camera will zoom in and or make decisions. Um, I know there's some questions out there. Uh, let's look, is the pan rate settable between presets? How slow can it go? Uh, on this camera itself, uh, it's uh, one set speed. It's not, uh, it's not uh, changeable. I know with other camera lines, our higher end lines, like the Pro AV lines, those are adjustable. You can change the, uh, the pan sp uh, speed there. Uh, this one is fairly uh, middle of the road, I guess you could say, with the Cam 520 Pros and the VC 520 Pros uh, that we have. Uh, the uh, digitals kind of act the same way when it's doing its digital uh, panning and, and zooming. Um, is there any way to update firmware via network web GUI instead of disconnecting USB from the system and connecting locally via the PTZ app? Uh, bulk firmware updates from multiple devices on a network. That's a great question. And yes, we do. The... Uh, uh, and just to show you a little bit, uh, um, well, do you want to, well, let, let me kind of just answer that really fast. Uh, there's uh, three different ways to do firmware updates. You could do it via our PTZ app with USB, like the way they, they mentioned it. Um, the Cam 20 Pro 2, Cam 20 Pro, VC 20 Pro, Cam 130, almost all of our lines uh, can be updated via the Windows update services. And that actually just started happening within the last month. So as we had gotten Microsoft Teams certified, uh, we did upload our firmwares into the Microsoft Update Services. So you can update just through Windows Update Services now as well. Uh, but if you wanted to also do it via Ethernet, uh, you would be able to do the auto update via the, uh, the firmware and it will crawl out to our servers and download it directly. Um, uh, the, and then a, another question is, is there a distance limit to where the cameras can auto frame? Uh, yes, there is. And depending upon the camera line, um, the uh, newer cameras that we came out with, the VC520 Pro 2, Cam520 Pro 2, uh, those ones were about 100% uh, uh, successful up to uh, seven to 10 meters away, I believe. The, uh, and then from there, it kind of degrades down within uh, uh, possibility of detecting a body. Uh, the older ones that we had, that number was about uh, six meters, uh, three to six meters away, depending upon which ones. All right. And then another one, can the camera framing function only support or work on the newer cameras, not the older Cam 520s? No, camera uh, Cam 520s, they worked as well, just that the framing function worked differently. Um, the, the original Cam 520s that we had, it was doing more face detection. It was looking for two eyes, a nose and a mouth, as well as an ear to frame up. It wasn't looking at a body. As you could imagine, because of COVID, people walking in with masks nowadays, that's why we kind of pivoted and we said, well, you know what, let's change that up with, uh, with some newer hardware that we could do some more intense processing. And that's why we came out with the Cam 520 Pro 2. Uh, with that in mind, T, you want to kind of go through the settings a little bit more and kind of focus on uh, answering that? Yeah. Definitely. Um, so right now, moving on to frame and speed. So this is a cool new feature that we have. So basically, it is going to be whenever you're using auto frame or preset framing. So you're actually able to set the speed of what the frame and speed is. So essentially, that will tell the camera how often it should adjust um, or readjust the framing. So for a slow speed, it would take about five seconds. So if no participants are moving in a conference room for five seconds, that's when it would choose to reframe. Middle speed is going to be the default, and that would be three seconds. 
And for high speed, that's actually going to be every second. So that's a little bit intense. <laughs> so for those, we wouldn't recommend those for a full conference room. Definitely more for like a one person presenter. So for that person, if they happen, so like if I happen to move this way within one second, the camera will readjust based on that movement alone. So that's definitely better for a one person presenter moving across the stage that would work perfect for the high speed. We also have the option of adjusting the smart frame preset point. So for this one, you kind of want to choose a preset point so that the camera can detect participants from the wide view of the sign preset area direction. So if your camera is going to be kind of in the corner of a room, um, you wouldn't really want the default center of the screen just because if it's in this corner, the conference room is going to be this way. You're going to definitely want to be able to readjust that screen beforehand. So that way, when someone does is able to walk into a room, it already kind of is able to pinpoint where they are and we frame accordingly. Down here, we do have autofocus. So you are able to pick between pan, tilt, zoom. So basically, the camera will autofocus every single time a pan, a tilt, or a zoom happens. You also have the option of choosing continuous, which means it would just, con just like I said, it would keep continuing to autofocus and readjust as, um, as no movement is needed. For camera focus, um, we typically would recommend autofocus, but you definitely have the option to do a manual as well. You just go ahead and move the bar as whatever you wanted. And for the home position, so this is going to be the position where every single time your camera starts up, this is where it's going to be. So right now we have it set for preset zero. So for this tight shot, this is where it's going to be every single time the camera starts up. I'm happy with it. I'm always going to be sitting here, so I'm good to go. Yeah, just to, just to kind of uh, touch up more on the home position part, that is every time the camera is engaged. So mm -hmm. uh, meeting hasn't started, the camera's in a sleep position. It's kind of turned off, really. As soon as a meeting starts, that's when it goes to the home position. Um, if you disable video and re-enable it, it's kind of going to the home position again. So mm -hmm. just to, to clarify that part. And you do have the option of also clicking the factory center position, which is be straightforward. And then you do have the last position as well. Based on the last call you got off of the last time you used it, it would be that position. Yeah. And for sleep position, you do have two options. So we do have the factory downside position, which is down to the right. And the reason why we also added preset nine is that for a couple of use cases, customers have came out to us and was like, honestly, it's cool that it goes down, but we can't have it go into the side because it starts to kind of like, hit something that might be interfering with it. So in that case, we do have the option of doing preset nine. So that way your camera will be able to go whichever way you want it. Also, if you wanted your camera completely pointed up to the ceiling, so it was not looking at anyone for privacy reasons, you're able to do that as well. All right. Mm -hmm. So with that in mind, all the other portions, I think we're gonna do another webinar just on image manipulation on how to do things. If you wanted to flip the image, uh, mirror the image, cause you, you kind of set it up upside down. You're able to do that all through there. Uh, but um, do you know what? I'm going to go ahead and take the uh, the screen sharing yeah. back here, T. Um, I know there's a, while I set that up, there's a question, um, you know, uh, that Bill kind of threw out there. What, you know, the 520 will auto track and I don't need the TR30. Um, so uh, yes and no. <laughs> the Cam 520 Pro 2, it does have an auto track feature for a single person that is in a conference room. Let's just say that they're presenting and there's only one person there, no other people are there. That's when it'll kind of follow you and, and auto track. So you can present in that in that aspect. Uh, but the TR, uh, the TR320, I mean, that is a true auto tracking camera in which you could set uh, different kind of tracking types. You could have uh, the segmented tracking, you could have the continuous tracking, you could set different zones. And so, you know, that's the difference between the, uh, you know, the $2,000 camera and then, you know, the, the $1,000 camera that we have. So the, uh, the Cam 520 Pro 2, that will do a tracking feature for a single person that's in a conference room and is designed for conference rooms. The, uh, the TR320 is more designed for houses of worship, uh, uh, podiums and stage style tracking. So just uh, for some clarification there. So with that, uh, I'm going to kind of deepen and, and or go a little bit deeper into uh, uh, some of the settings here. Uh, the VC520 Pro that I have right over here, um, within the system portions of it, 
uh, you are able to do your firmware updates. So because this one uh, is connected up through the USB side of that PTZ app, the firmware updated and everything is going to be done over my PC. So it's going to download from my PC and then shoot it over the USB um, USB cable to uh, to connect in and upload that software. Now let's just say I go back to the home portion and let's just say I go to the web page of this five twenty uh, of this VC five twenty Pro that I have. So when I log into this one, uh, there are a couple of differences. There's minute differences between the USB side and the web page side. So on this web page side, you can tell it's it's almost similar. It's about ninety percent parity. But one thing I do want to recommend to everybody is that if you have the Cam 520 Pro 2s, VC 520 Pro 2s, any of our systems like the VB 130 that has an Ethernet interface for web uh, for web access. Uh, set the date and time. If you set the date and time correctly, uh, that will synchronize because all of these come from our factory in Taiwan, and they're all set with a uh, time zone for uh, for you know where they came out from. Uh, if you set the time zone for the conference room that you're in, or that is where it's going to live, uh, now when you actually download logs from the uh the system it'll match for whatever you know uh, detective work that you guys were going to look into for figuring out any issues that you might come across so uh just a little quick uh little pro tip for you guys set the time and date will definitely be helpful we do have an easy manager that we can that we'll probably do another webinar separately on that you could manage multiple cameras uh at one time but uh being able to go into the date and time format. I usually set it to just auto. I go to the NTP server, but I just select the time zone that it's going to look, uh, this is going to live at. So with that in mind, if I look at the, the PTZ app and I go to the USB settings, the system portion has a, a little bit cleaner look for you. Um, but one thing I do want to show is that if you have to do a factory default, uh, and you click on the factory default, it's going to ask you if you want to keep the IP address or keep the web page or keep the web access. If you uncheck those, it's going to wipe everything like factory straight from the factory. Um, if you click on the troubleshooting part, it is going to download a zip file. And I'll just go ahead and, and do it to show you guys. It's going to download a zip file that's going to give you a lot of great data. Now, a lot of this data comes from the PC that is connected with via USB that it kind of accesses stuff. Uh, but it will give you uh, settings information of the camera itself, how the white balance is set, the brightness combo. So people say the camera doesn't look good, things are off. You could kind of go download it give the zip data to our support group, we could actually look at more detailed information or if you just need it for yourself. Uh, but also uh, there is uh, great information within the Ecamm log that gives a lot of detailed info as far as what uh, resolutions and formats, everything are setting through a lot of good detailed information. With that in mind, uh, are there, any questions so far? Let me see, Adam Andrew, what do you recommend to run USB over ethernet and can you get mouse control of the camera with USB? Uh, you can get mouse control of the camera with USB, but you would need, uh, well, remember our camera uh, recognizes USB, UVC and hit commands. So if there is an application that will send Microsoft HID commands or U UVC commands through the USB, our camera would respond to it. Um, I know some uh, video providers don't give you the mouse control to kind of move things left and right. Uh, but there are uh, also uh, shortcut keys that you could kind of put in place to, to move a camera around as well. So, uh, on, on the uh, PTZ app, if you go to the gear icon in the upper right corner, you could look at hotkey controls. And so these are controls that you could, that you could have for your keyboard. 
if you wanted to use the keyboard to kind of um, go back and forth, uh, you could turn these on and off as you can as well. And then based on what camera you have, there might be different settings that pops up. Yep. Um, what do you recommend to use USB over Ethernet? Um, I would, uh, for the TR311, I think it might be a little bit different with the, the hotkey controls or the, or, uh, the controls there, but, uh, but there are, um, uh, actually, we'd have to get back to you on that <laughs> for that one specifically. <laughs> That's pretty much it that I really wanted to go over with everybody uh, to kind of show uh, you know all the uh, all the the detailed information there. Um, are there any other questions that we could go over? I know one thing we wanted to kind of let everybody know is that uh, you know uh, thank you for participating. You will have the opportunity to uh, to win a fifty dollar uh, Amazon, Amazon gift, card. gift card. Oh yeah, um, so I believe we're going to make that announcement shortly after. Um, but, uh, T, is there anything you wanted to add or? No, honestly, just thank you everyone so much for attending. Uh, definitely be on the lookout for the Amazon gift card. We're going to have up to three winners. Oh, yeah. <laughs> All right. With that in mind. Thanks, everybody, for joining. If you have any other questions, please ask them right now. <laughs> Right, so guys. we did get a question for um, if we have a partner portal. So we do have a partner portal more for resellers and DISTI. And if you're interested in that, we can definitely send you the information for that. Nice. Cam 130 should be coming down the pipeline by this, uh, by May, beginning of May. And I believe we're getting some questions on the TR530. Yeah, so the CAM 130 is our uh, huddle room, small conference room, huddle room, focus room, and power user uh, camera. That's the one that I'm using right now. It does come with a built-in fill light um, in which uh, that light could be turned on and off. If you want to see a quick little demonstration for it before we close off, I'm going to go ahead and turn off the... Uh, the lights to my camera here um, and kind of show you the difference between uh, the fill light that is kind of turned on with it because uh, this camera. So I am in a closed off room, a dark room, and the light is on right now. If I were to turn the light off here, let me turn it to complete. That's actually at a one. Uh, let me turn it off here with the camera settings. And that's with my light turned off. So uh, the fill light does help bring a light source from directly in front of you and not overhead and down. And it actually really helps out with illuminating people's faces so they don't have a big ring light everywhere else. So. All right. Look at that. All the questions are coming in now. All right. So the <laughs> so for the tracking modes on the TR530, I know there's three different tra tracking modes uh, for those. Um, don't remember them off the top of my head, but there's um, was it the segment tracking? Um, Should be like a wide mode. Yeah, there's a wide mode, and 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 bottom line, the the different modes on those were for, you know, if you had somebody, and you had different segments, and areas, to say in this one area, um, ignore people as they walk by. So let's just say people were walking and getting uh, their diplomas. You didn't want to track every person that's walking by. Um, there's a mode that will do it to presets. So if they're walking, it'll track them nice and fluidly once they hit the whiteboard or easel uh, it will zoom out to the preset and only and if they stood within that preset area 
they would be within the easel. So that's kind of like the preset framing that we were talking about before. Um, in that aspect, you could set different zones for that. Uh, and then the third mode, I believe, was uh, continuous stick on this one person and only that one person only um, as they walk around and they'll, they'll bug everybody else. Um, I know that uh, for the 530s, the, uh, the, I believe it was the same lens as the, uh, some of the other ones, I, I believe it was an 84, um, 84 degree field of view. Um, wasn't that big, but those were definitely made to be, you know, at a kind of a longer throw. Um, and the output resolutions on those, TD you know on the 530s, what the, uh, the, the resolution was, I believe they were set for, um, I don't know if that was a 4K line or if that was the um, that was 1080p. A 1080p. Yeah, 1080p line. Yeah, it was a 1080p line. Um, for the Campfire 20, how much distance cover and auto frame function? Uh, you're looking at about uh, 10 meters away. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's about 30 feet, really, for the auto frame function. Mm -hmm. I've seen it work a lot further as well. Remember, it's got a 12 time optical zoom, so I know that'll zoom in well up to uh, 60 feet. Uh, how do how could I do for sales and, and tech certification? Um, I have to probably hit you up directly for that one. Can you control the camera with the Aver Capture Share via USB? Um, so there's one thing that we may want to do for the um, for the a different webinar, but you can do. Uh, for the CAMFI 20 Pro line and a lot of our Ethernet line, a uh, line that has Ethernet connectivity on there, but you can do web-based controls. Uh, and that's how we're able to do like our OBS plugin. And so you can have uh, web access to do controls. And I believe you could do that to do it over your phone as well, because I know you're trying to uh, show how to do that, um, uh, Phil. So we, we could, uh, I could probably sync with you directly on that one and probably have a specific webinar mainly on how to set up like disk over IP control, web access control for like OBS and uh, kind of advanced control options. Um, it, we, we do have a joystick controller that we can use uh, that our Pro-AV line sells. And I believe we're gonna put that over until our uh, USB line. But yes, there is a joystick controller with the latest version of version of software. You can use it to connect that up. That be um, our CL1. So you can yeah. find that on our web page as well. It will, it's currently on the Pro AV page, but we'll, we'll, we'll be adding it to the video conference page as well. Yep. Yeah, and the Cam 130, try and buy, that should be, that should be coming in uh, uh, by next, by like in two or three weeks. All right. And I believe that's it. Guys, thanks again for uh, for uh, joining and we appreciate it. This is fun. Good. Right, thanks well, guys. Yeah, hopefully we'll see you guys all next time. Take care.